Hi, I'm Daniel, I'm a sleep physician. And if you have insomnia, this channel is for you. Today, it is time for Journal Club. And we're gonna look at a paper comparing cognitive behavioral therapy versus Ambien for treatment of chronic insomnia. Nice having you back here. And if it's your first time on this channel, very, very big welcome to you. Hope you feel, uh, will find something of, of value here. And uh, I'm very happy to do a journal club today. Uh, I know uh, I haven't done any journal clubs in a while. This particular paper we're gonna look at has been sitting around on, on my desk for a while. So finally getting to it. And uh, as I always say, uh, before we get to this, this paper, uh, nothing here is med medical advice, but just you know, general thoughts and advice that I hope will be helpful to anyone that is hearing this. So I picked up this paper uh, that was published um, couple of years ago, 2004. It's from the Archives of Internal Medicine. It's um, uh, a randomized study where uh, they've taken uh, people with chronic insomnia and then kind of uh, treated them in different ways to see what was the most effective way of helping them. Let's get right to it. So um, for you that are watching this on the YouTube channel, you will see some of the of the graphs, etc. But I think if you're listening on a podcast, it, it no, you will have no problem following either. So I'm looking at figure one here, where we can see that um, in the study, there were 63 uh, patients uh, included, and they ranged in age from 25 to 62 or something like that. Uh, uh, on average, about, you know, people in their on, on, on average, about 45, 47 years or so. And, and they were randomized into four groups. So a group of 15 uh, underwent cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, and for you who, who are like, what are you talking about? What's cognitive behavioral therapy? Well, that's a, you know, a, um, a group of techniques that are, are used to treat insomnia and really what I talk about all the time on this channel. Uh, so if, you just, if, you're, if you're completely new to CBT, then just watch a couple more uh, videos, particularly the early ones like uh, episode one, episode five, et cetera, and you will, uh, uh, you will know what I'm talking about. Now, so going back to this article here, so out of the 63 people uh, that were in this study, 15 uh, uh, were treated with cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT, 15 patients uh, were treated with Ambien, and 15 patients were treated with, uh, sorry, 18 patients treated with a combination of Ambien and cognitive behavioral therapy, and then 15 patients received placebo. And uh, treatment went on for eight weeks. Uh, and uh, those that were in the cognitive behavioral therapy group, they received four 30-minute uh, consultations and one phone call. The people in the Ambien group, I, I, they got 10 milligrams of Ambien for four weeks and then it was tapered down. I think they got five milligrams for two weeks and then 2.5 milligrams for two weeks. And let's take a look and see what happens. So um, we are going to look at or uh, talk about, if you're on the podcast here, a, a figure that is called figure two. And in this, we can see uh, changes in what's called sleep onset latency, which basically just means how fast people were falling asleep. And we can see that in the group that were treated with CBT, there was uh, at the mid treatment mark. So four weeks into treatment, when, when those in the CBT uh, group had not actually gotten their full dose, so to speak, of cognitive behavioral therapy, but the Ambien group had are on, at this point, they were on full dose of Ambien, which was 10 milligrams. So at that point in time, mid-treatment, in the CBT group, there was a 42-43% improvement, meaning they had gone to sleep uh, in fr from, you know, at the beginning of the study, like, actually before study, I should say, uh, uh, the people in the CBT group uh, fell asleep in about 70 minutes, so an hour and 10 minutes, and mid-treatment, so after about four weeks, that was down to 36.8 minutes, so a you know 30-minute um, improvement there. Very similar in the combination therapy group, and in the Ambien group, there was also an improvement. They had gone from falling asleep in 71 minutes uh, to mid-treatment uh, to 45 minutes. So that improvement, though, was not as good as in the CBT group. The Ambien group, they, they had, there was a 30% improvement in how fast they fell asleep and uh, a more than 40% improvement in the CBT and the combination therapy group. Now, in the group that uh, received placebo, there was a 10% improvement. So in numbers, that was 
they went from falling asleep in like 72 minutes to like 68 minutes. So really not much improvement there to speak of. Now, interestingly here is that when you look at the same thing, like how fast people fell asleep, not mid-treatment, not after four weeks, but after eight weeks. Uh, so shortly after eight weeks, in the CBT group, there had been further improvement. They had gone from now, instead of falling asleep in, you know, 37 minutes, that was down to 34 minutes, you know, a little bit of improvement there, um, versus in the um, ambient group, where they had gone from, at mid-treatment, falling asleep in 45 minutes, now worsening again, so after treatment, that was back to one hour. And we will see the kind of the same thing repeating when we look at what's called sleep efficiency. And sleep efficiency is a measure of your quality of sleep, which is like how much of the time you're in bed are you actually sleeping? What percentage of the time you are in bed are you actually sleeping? And a good sleep efficiency is, you know, 80, 85% or so or more. And we can see that again in mid-treatment, there had been a 14% improvement in sleep efficiency in the CBT group. And a and about you know nine percent improvement improvement in the in the ambient group. Now after treatment we see the same thing. After treatment the sleep efficiency had further improved in the CBT group, and it had actually decreased almost to like baseline in the ambient group. And uh, uh, a few final things I want to point out from the study was looking beyond you know the eight week treatment phase. Um, they, they had looked in the CBT group uh, at, you know, follow up one month, three months, six months, and 12 months after completing treatment. And, and both for like how fast you fall asleep and the kind of quality of sleep, though the benefits were remained, like people still did, did well in those groups. And, uh, and, and one last thing, which I think was interesting, they had in this study, they actually asked people both to keep a sleep diary and like objectively measure their like brain activity to see how much they actually slept. And in the ambient group, people like when they before they started treatment estimated that they slept around 303 minutes uh, per night. Uh, and after treatment, they estimated that they were sleeping like 370 minutes, so like an hour more. But when you actually looked at the EEG data, the, the the opposite was seen like they had actually gone before treatment of sleeping like you know 367 minutes to after treatment 315 minutes and and no that sounds bizarre right what's what's up with that well i see that a lot in clinic like you know you have people that say that you know on ambien they sleep much more than they actually do like it's 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 kind of uh, it's a it's a hypnotic it's a uh, it, it it produces some some degree of amnesia, and I think why did they sleep so much less after treatment? That was a little bit of rebound insomnia. Like you put somebody on Ambien, then you take it away, then they sleep even less than when the whole thing began. So I think the key things here is like cognitive behavioral therapy is effective for chronic insomnia. Like it can help you. It is better than medications. Primarily, I think like the main reason I think it's so so helpful to use CBT techniques is that, you know, you get better and better and better, or at least you get to a, a point where you're sleeping fairly well, and then you remain at that point. So I think that this study really highlights this, which you see in so many other studies as well. So I hope this was helpful, and I, I hope you found this interesting to review this article. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, then leave a comment here or email me at Daniel at insomniainsight.co. And if you follow this channel, you'll so you'll you'll um, recognize that that's the new email address. I finally pulled the plug, uh, uh, pull the plug, <laughs> pull the trigger. I mean to say, pull the trigger yesterday and uh, and bought uh, the uh, site uh, insomniainsight.co. So I'm gonna start building that and putting uh, you know the podcast episodes there, link to the YouTube. Uh, I'll have a blog there eventually. And, uh, and maybe more. Uh, so as always, super, super happy when you guys send me emails with questions. Uh, and uh, I hope to have you back here very soon. Until then, bye-bye.